In the Pacific Northwest, something alarming is happening. Thousands of earthquakes have been detected in recent weeks, a relentless pulse of energy beneath the surface that most people never feel, but scientists cannot ignore. These aren't just random tremors. They're part of a deeper, more ominous story unfolding below one of the most seismically volatile regions in North America. History tells us that Earth doesn't whisper warnings, it sends them in waves. Swarms of tremors, pressure building in silence, subtle ground shifts, these are the precursors that precede some of the most devastating natural disasters in human memory. The signs are rarely obvious to the public, but to geologists, they speak volumes. Are these thousands of quakes a mere geological hiccup, or the prelude to one of the most catastrophic natural disasters in American history? Today, let's delve into the recent seismic unrest in the Cascadia subduction zone, exploring the science behind these tremors, and what these signals could mean for the imminent threat known as the big one. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. Stretching from Northern California to British Columbia, the Cascadia subduction zone is a massive fault line formed where two tectonic plates meet. The Juan de Fuca plate, a small oceanic plate, is sliding beneath the larger continental North American plate in a process known as subduction. Unlike California's San Andreas Fault, which is a strike-slip fault, where tectonic plates slide past each other horizontally, often causing frequent but moderate earthquakes, the Cascadia subduction zone is capable of producing rare but devastating megathrust earthquakes. The last known megathrust earthquake from Cascadia occurred on January 26, 1700, with an estimated magnitude of 8.7 to 9.2. That quake generated a massive tsunami that crossed the Pacific Ocean and hit Japan. Geological records, such as sediment layers and ghost forests, suggest that these events occur roughly every 300 to 500 years. With more than 325 years having passed since the last rupture, scientists consider the region to be overdue. The recent seismic swarm in 2025 has heightened this concern. Recently, the Cascadia subduction zone experienced a surge in seismic activity that caught the attention of geologists worldwide. According to the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, more than 8,900 tremors were detected between April 21st and May 21st a dramatic escalation compared to normal levels. These microquakes were not felt on the surface, but they were clearly detected by the region's sophisticated network of seismometers and GPS stations. This phenomenon, known as a seismic swarm, typically indicates stress accumulation deep within the Earth's crust. Most of the tremors occurred offshore at intermediate depths and exhibited characteristics of episodic tremor and slip events. ETS is a slow-motion seismic process in which the fault slips gradually over several days or weeks without generating noticeable ground shaking. While ETS events can temporarily relieve stress along certain parts of the fault, they often transfer stress to locked segments, areas of the fault that remain immobile and are storing energy. When these locked zones eventually rupture, they are capable of producing catastrophic megathrust earthquakes. The sheer volume and intensity of tremors in May far exceeded historical averages, raising red flags that the fault system is becoming increasingly unstable. Roughly 300 miles off the Oregon coast, the Axial Seamount, a submarine volcano perched atop the Juan de Fuca Ridge, has emerged as a significant piece of the Cascadian puzzle. It is one of the most active volcanoes in the Pacific Ocean and in 2025, it began showing signs of heightened unrest. Scientists recorded over 1,000 micro-earthquakes each day around the seamount, accompanied by noticeable uplift of the caldera floor, a clear signal of magma rising and pressure building beneath the seafloor. Though Axial Seamount is not part of the Cascadia subduction zone, the two systems are geologically linked by the Juan de Fuca plate. When stress builds or shifts within the plate, it can manifest both at the subduction boundary and at volcanic centers like Axial. The fact that both the Cascadia subduction zone and Axial are exhibiting intense seismic behavior simultaneously suggests a regional tectonic activation. 
The increased activity at axial seamount is therefore more than just a volcanic curiosity. It may be a surface-level symptom of deeper tectonic unrest affecting the entire plate boundary system. This reinforces fears that Cascadia's locked segments could be inching closer to a tipping point. Seismic swarms like the one observed in May 2025 are more than geological noise. They are windows into the hidden buildup of tectonic stress. Scientists now recognize that episodic tremor and slip events can do more than redistribute stress. They may actively weaken fault zones by increasing pore fluid pressure, effectively lubricating the fault and reducing its resistance to rupture. This mechanism becomes even more concerning when swarms occur more frequently or with greater intensity, as seen in 2025, potentially signaling a fault system nearing critical failure. What adds weight to this concern is the simultaneous unrest at axial seamount. Tied to the same tectonic plate system, the fact that both the subduction zone and a magmatic center are experiencing elevated seismicity suggests a broader regional activation. Together, these signs point not just to local instability, but to a cascading system that may be preparing for something far more significant. The term the big one refers to the long-anticipated megathrust earthquake expected to rupture along the Cascadia subduction zone. With potential magnitudes reaching 9.0 or higher, such an event would dwarf anything the Pacific Northwest has experienced in modern history. FEMA and USGS simulations predict over 10,000 fatalities, $80 billion in damages, and decades of regional disruption. Cities like Portland, Seattle, and Vancouver would face widespread structural collapse, fires, power outages, and mass displacement. More terrifyingly, coastal communities could be devastated within minutes by tsunamis over 100 feet high, leaving little to no time for evacuation. What makes this looming threat even more dire is its collision course with climate change. A study by Virginia Tech researchers warns that coastal subsidence from a megathrust quake, potentially over 6.5 feet, combined with rising sea levels, could vastly expand tsunami impact zones. More than 700 miles of roads, thousands of homes, and critical infrastructure could become inundation zones overnight. Current evacuation maps may already be outdated, offering communities a false sense of security in the face of a triple threat – earthquake, flood, and rising seas. If these risks sound apocalyptic, it's because similar disasters have already played out elsewhere. The 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake, a magnitude 9.1 event that killed over 230,000 people, and the 2011 Tohoku earthquake in Japan a magnitude 9.0 disaster that claimed lives of nearly 20,000 people. Both followed eerily familiar patterns, foreshocks, swarms, and ignored warnings. In Japan, tsunami defenses failed catastrophically because the underlying assumptions underestimated the fault's full rupture potential. Today, Cascadia is showing similar signals, escalating tremor swarms, shifting seabed pressures, and geophysical instability across an entire plate boundary system. The comparisons are no longer hypothetical. They're a mirror held up to our future. Despite mounting evidence and escalating warnings, preparedness across the Pacific Northwest remains patchy and uneven. While some states have implemented strict seismic building codes, early warning systems like shake alert and community evacuation protocols, many others have not. Critical infrastructure, including hospitals, schools, and bridges, often remains unreinforced against the Cascadia-level quake. Evacuation drills are rare, public awareness is inconsistent, and in some at-risk communities, tsunami sirens and alert networks are outdated or non-existent. Experts stress the urgency of updated hazard maps that incorporate sea level rise and coastal subsidence widespread retrofitting of vulnerable infrastructure, and public education campaigns to bridge the awareness gap. The 2025 seismic swarm must not be seen as a curious anomaly. It should be viewed as a rehearsal for a far larger disaster. The Cascadia subduction zone is alive with movement. The thousands of tremors recorded in May 2025, combined with the volcanic unrest at axial seamount, 
underscore the mounting stress across the Pacific Northwest. Scientists agree that the region is overdue for a major quake. While the exact timing of the big one remains uncertain, the signals are growing clearer and more frequent. This is not alarmism, it is geology. Cascadia has ruptured before, and it will rupture again. The only question is when. The recent seismic activity must be treated as more than just background noise. It is a warning. Preparation, public awareness, and policy action are the only lines of defense against what could be the most devastating natural disaster in U.S. history. The time to act is now, because the big one is no longer a distant possibility. It is a looming reality. Do you think America is ready to face this colossal megathrust earthquake? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.